I'm Andrew King and this is another instructional video I'm making on um, getting the wow factor out of some of these dull semi-matte satin finish Hornby or Backman type or any other types of locomotives and things and carriages but this one is this video is specific about this particular uh, Hornby Hush Hush locomotive which is a fantastic locomotive, but Hornby just mm, didn't seem to go the full uh, nine yards or whatever the term is uh, on getting the finish up to scratch. I don't mean the quality of finish, I mean the amount of painted details. There's lots of details that are just not painted, and it makes it, yeah, the, the loco look well, just rather dull for the money you pay. So, <clears throat> this is my hush hush, and what I've done, I have described this in the previous video, on, on the coach varnishing, which I use as a practice to lots of coaches, or at least 10 I guess, to get the uh, my technique up to scratch to make sure I didn't ruin this <laughs> quite expensive locomotive. So what I've done on this, so far anyway, I've, the wheels, they didn't have the tyres, the, the, the red paint went right up to the edge of where the, you know, where the tyre was. Now this is the steel bit that goes on the rails, and it was again it was matte and a rather it was I think it was the correct red, but it was, very, it was very dull and didn't really show up at all. So using Hornby's own paint of um whatever it is, Rail Three Double O Four I think it is in gloss that really brings it out, and then high silver um, rims which are, I think are classes of tyres. I've done that on all the wheels and the tender. You can see those as well. And that really makes it stand out and then also little bits they missed which I like that brass fit in there that tiny little bit of brass and copper there which I can understand them not doing that that's pretty difficult but I had some very fine paint brushes and just about managed it something they really should have done because Batman do it and I don't know why Hornby don't is the brass well I think it's brass anyway well, I've done with brass and maybe stainless steel around the windows there and these don't come out, you have to do it in situ, not easy. Um, and the wooden window frames, and you can't see it here, but that has also got the brass edging top and bottom and at the back, which meant I had to break them off. Again, not an easy task to do. I've also done all inside the cab, which you can't see that, and it's not part of this video. Some mild weathering around here. These this area here has got a brass effect as well. Uh, the drain some of the drain pipes and that have all been done in copper and brass not just the standard brass or whatever hornby have done it to differentiate them this has been weathered here on the tender and the greasy effects on top of the various springs and axle box cover things and for some reason on the photos there was a little brass bits so i don't know i haven't seen a real one to tell this has been done all red around here because that was black on the hornby one and the um brass on the window at the back of the tender but <clears throat> as you might have already noticed the blue or the loco is dull matty satin look and this is high gloss this because it's flat was fairly easy to do so i've done that and you can should be able to see from the video right now the difference and it just brings out what i class the wow effect and if i put this in the light so you can see the finish that's all done by brush there's not a dust mark in it and there's not a brush mark in it and that was done without any um, masking at all just by hand but the trick is a good quality varnish that flows not stodgy and keeping it level and flat at all times and a complete dust free well as near as dust free environment as you can manage so this whole work area and all the tools and all that in it, in it have all been uh, wiped with a damp cloth which picks up any dust and new and new cloths to wipe the brushes on brand new white spirit of which I have well because these are done with uh, enamel varnish and one bigger was just, I just use Coleman's and could be any jar I do I suppose but one I use for cl absolutely clean varnish and one is to, to wash the brushes in so what you'll see in a minute why I have a clean varnish and a dirty one they both look clean at the minute because I'm using varnish and even if it's dirty you wouldn't know it anyway because it's clear varnish 
in spirit, but I'm designating the big one for the dirty because I can then pour the clean. This is the way the clean varnish. I can then, when it's semi used, I can then pour that into that rather than throwing it away all the time. Good enough to wash the brushes in anyway for a while. Anyway, so that's what I've done there. So I can remove the tender now. There's the gold window, by the way, there. Yeah, not, not easy to do, trying to paint thin with around a curve. You don't want hands that, that judder. <laughs> and by the way, your hands have to be absolutely clean as well. I'm washing mine all the time. No sweat, sweaty fingerprints. And don't touch the area where you're going to paint, varnish, whatever. Right, so the first thing to do is to clean. Let's assume this is straight out the box. And it may have been handled by the manufacturers who assembled it. Well, it will have been. People in, I presume it's China. So we have to assume it's got greasy dabs on it. And I can see some little grease marks there. I'm holding it by in the black areas because I'm not going to do those. I'm just going to do the blue. And the first thing to do is to slosh it all down with um, turps. So using the small one, clean. You can't see it, but I'll be dabbing in that. And using not my absolute best brush, but a reasonable brush, I'm going to swab it down. Not you don't wipe it off. You just brush it on and just let it evaporate off. That's all I do. I can do the black area as well here. I'm not going to be varnishing that. Just the blue, I think. And then the blue itself will be varnished in a very specific order. I think that's the key to getting this to work. Because this varnish is very runny. Not unlike this Terps. I'll balance it there and on the wheel. Like that. So I can tilt it. Oh, I did... Pre uh, I forgot. Pre pre to this, I brushed the whole thing down with a... What was it? A lady's makeup brush. Face brush. But a brand new one. Or never use, should I say. <laughs> never use a second hand one of these things. Always brand new and the cheapest you can get. They're very good at removing dust off the surface without damaging any details. Uh, carefully do it around these windows. A bit more. Let me do that all over. If there is any minor fingerprints, it will spread it out over the whole loco and you'll be so spread out that it'll be negligible to the effect of the varnish. You can't wipe it off as such. It's not going to really not douse it in it, so you're washing it off. It's just mainly spreading it over such a wide area that it'll become so minimal to be not be a problem. Alright, now I've got to turn it around. Use the buffers in the back of the cab like right that. Careful not to damage things. Hold on to that over here. Bit more, don't let it be thin. You want it to sort of, sort of run. And you leave it till it's completely dry once you've done that. The cab doors as well, I suppose. That'd be a tricky area to do around those cab windows. So, And there, on the front ish. Oh, yeah, yeah, as you can see from here, maybe. And copper pipes around here as well. Just add a little bit more. And the brass fit fittings. Unlike a 9F, which has a complete knot of pipe work, this is very simple. Anyway, I might as well do the black as well one about it. Uh, <clears throat> now, I will just leave that to dry and come back to it in a minute, maybe 20 minutes. Right. The varnish, not the varnish, 
the white spirit has now evaporated. So I'll discuss hopefully my plan for how I'm going to do this. Right side, that's it. Well, you can't with this, this, this is the varnish I'm going to use. I'll start there. Phoenix Precisions. Get it. Uh, PAV 62 gloss varnish and they, they do two versions so you know the difference there's PV 62 which is just their everyday clear varnish which is more well, unthin but it's a normal consistency but the one I use seems to work very well so far is they're ready thinned for airbrushing okay and that is represents the A I think the A stands for airbrushing as opposed to the non A see PV only so that's what I'm going to use and it's like water you don't need to stir it you just use it, <clears throat> it has no solids in it whatsoever it's just varnish now when I do the coaches and the uh, um, tender that I showed you earlier, they're relatively easy because they're flat flat surfaces. So like this is a flat surface. That's more or less a flat surface. And that can be done with quite a bit of varnish, and allow it, uh, which allows it to sort of flow out and level nicely. But the boiler area, a boiler and firebox area, are obviously curved and they go around the other side. Now uh, that potentially causes a problem. Means you can't do the whole locomotive, well, at least it, you can't do half a locomotive because it would end up running round the, the, the side and it would be a wibbly wobbly and it'd be a harder an edge and it'd look terrible. It looked great from this side until you turned it over and it looked looking awful. So, what I intend to do is because you have to lay it on its side to do the, the boiler, you, can, you don't want to handle it if you're going to help it, is I'll do the boiler first, I'll do the most difficult bit first. And then when that's dry, I recommend you to allow at least two days for it to dry properly. One to dry and one to harden up a bit. Because it's, as I found out, if you lay these things on, say, one of these foam cradle things, only after one day, the foam cradle will leave little dinks in it. It's still slightly soft. So I will do the boiler in one go. And I have and thoughts about that because you've got to keep turning it from one side to the other. And you don't. <clears throat> and you don't want a, um, a varnish to pick up so you're going around here and by the time you come back to here that may have tacked off a bit so what I intend to do and it suddenly came to me yesterday is to do every other boiler band area so up to the boiler band and any little wibbly wobbly bits on that won't uh, mention if the brush does go over a little bit I always keep another brush handy the stamp with turps and I can just go up as close to the edge like that and just take the varnish off which then dries back to being the original finish again oh that's a theory anyway this is obviously going to be the most difficult bit going around here so I'm not going to, this is my usual brush and they're all, what is it, this was so this, is a, this is a superb brush this it's quite long, most brushes are relatively, I oh know that's not the same size, but the length, the length of bristles to width of this one is, is longer than most, isn't it? Um, maybe not, maybe it's about 52 to 1, yeah, yeah, maybe it is. Yeah, that's twice, two times that-ish, I'd say, as is that. Where this one isn't, you know, at one point, one and a quarter times the length. The width, so I say. So these longer br brushes seem to do this job a lot better. better. And this particular brush, same it isn't got it's got any markings on it. But it was this one. It was Dalla Rowney back in the day, and this is from 1980s. And it's still this brush is still going. It hasn't it doesn't hasn't um, frayed at the ends or anything. Or at least not, not perceptibly. <clears throat> Where some other brushes, this is a Reeves, I think. This one that has, <laughs> as you can. Put it over that white area. See that has not any good. Okay for doing washes and 
and weathering, but no good for doing this. These little bits sticking out the edge, they're just what you don't want. So that's lost a secondary brush now. And I have got this, as this is quite uh, fiddly, especially around the other side where you've got that, that pipe going and the handrails together. This one, I haven't used this brush, this one has got a name. Let's have a look. Can you see that? What make is it? So it is a Dalla. Oh, so it's Dalla Rowney again. Rowney. They seem to make fine brushes. Good ones. It feels good when you touch it. It's firm but supple. Not not, not some sort of flicks the varnish around. You don't want that. And there's its code, if you can read that. Take note. If it works. I warn you, I haven't done this with uh, varnish in a boiler for 10 years. So um, this is, as you see, I haven't practised. This will be a first attempt and only attempt. <laughs> Let's hope it works. So, I will do every other one. That's the idea. I'll give us another quick go. I can see a little bit just there. It's got come, it must, must come from, I don't know, dead skin from the beard or something. Make sure. So, you know, keep it handy. We've got rid of the... Um, any greasy marks they seem to have disappeared I think so which way around shall I have it to do this um, I think I'll be doing it like this I've got to think down so I'm thinking out loud in front of you now I've got to be able to come around here go around there go up there oh, that's probably all right that's actually two halves this one isn't it and that actually doesn't go over the top there. Just there. And a white stripe goes around it. Well, got to make a go of this, don't we? So that's the tissue paper ready to go, which is this clean piece of tissue paper to wipe the soak any excess varnish off, whatever. So I open the tin. And we have to go for it, I'm afraid. Tin open, as you can see inside. This stuff, you can see right down to the bottom of the tin, there you are, the light catches it, right? no solids in here whatsoever, unlike matte or satin varnish, which do have solids, you don't need to stir this, you can just use it, and a little goes an awful long way, it'll be off, off camera doing this, I don't want any risk of that bit knocking that over, right, so the clean varnish and the dirty varnish, open them up, First thing I do is I will put a little bit of uh, clean one to small one on there. Just to soft, make sure the brush is soft. And another another requirement for doing this is make sure that you haven't got hot weather. You do not want warm plastic. Now I hold this by the cab so I can manipulate it. Okay, hope you can see something. I'll let that soak right up. Now, when I do the flat areas, I put a lot of varnish on, but because I'm doing curved surfaces, I don't want to, because it might run. So we do this and hope for the best. I won't worry too much about the handrails. Get around that corner. I'll do it up. Like that. Make sure there's any bubbles, you pop them. Just a little slightly over the handrail. I mean the back boiler bands, not the handrail, sorry. Use the edge of the brush, up to the white line. And there. There you've got a good lighting, so you can... See. Can you see that? That's not a bubble, is it? Oh, it is. Get rid of that. Don't want that. Can you see that in the light? Yeah. Oh, now that shows up. I haven't got a bit there, hasn't it? It's worth doing that with a light. You can then see. You may think you've done somewhere. I haven't. I'll finish off going in a upward direction like that. Because whenever you, whenever you look at a real loco, I was down at the Bluebell yesterday. They look sprayed at first until you get the light on them. Then you find no, they're all brush painting. The very high quality 
paint, can you see that? So again, I'll be doing down here. Try to avoid the black. Don't want to go on that. And there. Over the brassy areas. I'm holding the loco, I can't hold me up my hand to stop it shaking a bit. I do have a very steady hand. If I put my hand, hand down on the like that, it's probably better. It wobbles a bit, but it wobbles in a straight line, that's not so bad. Around the corner. Like that. And then finish the area off with a Upward, kind of like this, and this bit here, the side, these fine brushes, I get a nice use of the, the, the edge is a fine brush this way, see? Which man was sort of shaking about, because I'm filming, you see. I'm nervous of you, ridiculous. There you go. I'll finish that with an upward mark like that. Try not to get on the black. I'm not on the black, are I? No. You can use the light to check. And with another little brush here, I'll use that. Same thing. Any bits that have gone over the edge, like this there, to do that. Picks it off, washes it away. Okay, so that's that done. This might not might need to, uh, uh, two two coats. I don't know because I can't put the qu quantity of varnish on that I would like to. But that's all right. So we miss this one, and now we go to this one. Bubbles if you get this there like that. Don't make sure you go underneath enough. A little bit more varnish in there, right? That's alright. Right, I'll go over the top. Do it in one end. Overlap each. Make sure you get rid of these bubbles. I guarantee they pop and disappear. You get a bubble, just give it a hit. The edge of the brush. Get on this there for some reason. Yeah, tilt it over. I assume you can see what I'm doing. It's easier doing it this way around, actually. You pull the brush towards yourself, eh? look at the top, make sure it's, it's working all right. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of varnish there, so we'll get that down there. Put it through the other side. Over that pipe, I suppose. Thing. There it is, underneath, down the banding. Sideways, actually. 
Side this time, actually. Look at this brush. Driving through this side, okay, overlap each stroke a bit. There's a little brush in there. It's only a little bit there that will sh might show up. Moved out there. Right? Good. There you go, it's going around the right. Alright, keep the wet edge. This area, that, that black area there, I think I actually painted that black. I don't know if it is black, it probably could be blue with shadow, but in a really old photograph. I think we can do that. Gloss as well, do that area there. It looked black, but it's because you're seeing the inside of the inside of the locomotive works. It's not lag there, or it doesn't appear to be. Uh, it was painted blue, so I didn't want it. So I painted it black. This adds a bit of shadow detail. There we are. Let's brush it upwards like that. That should do. Oh, the next one's a cab, isn't it? It's a bit by the cab. All right. I won't do the angled bit by the window, I'll just do this bit. If it overlaps a little bit, does that? I think. Anyway. Do that pipe again. disappear into the background. I'm going to have to cause a, a ridge of paint varnish. I suppose varnish is paint, isn't it? It's the base of all paint, I suppose. You add colour to it and you get paint. He says with no idea. I 
See, hopefully you can. Not in the way. Go over the top a little bit. A little ditty bit there on the black. I see this there. See it? I'll get that off. thing there. Right down. I'll do that bit this way. This works because it'd be a very expensive mistake if it's not. Alright. I'll see something. That's alright. Yeah. Right. You can see that in the light, but obviously that's wet varnish. Yeah, now I have a matte on stripey. But avoid touching the blue because your hands do get sweaty while you're holding things, especially when you're filming. And you've got the nerves that then you might do or say a blunder. Okay, I've never seen a swirling egg on these things yet. Right, I will stop there and come back tomorrow. So the first coat has dried overnight. It's not a super high gloss finish, as I didn't think it would be, because I only put on a thin coat. But there are, importantly, there are no runs. I'll just rotate it round, you'll be able to see the effect so far. See, compare the two in the light. So now we do the... Um, Fill in the other bits. Let's point out that when you let it dry, I put mine in a one foot square, genu genuine 1960s vintage Tupperware box. But of course, any cakey type box would probably do. That's clean and keeps the dust out. And stored on a, on a flat surface. So I start again doing this, as we did before, one in any air bubbles, a few there, go away. Overlapping the um, Boiler banding slightly. Can you see all right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Not too thick on the varnish. Put it underneath. Make sure it's all right at the top. Yep. Yeah.
Oh, there, that's that one. That's easy enough. And the next one. Central to screen. This brush is proving perfect choice. I pointed out at the first start of the video. It does this really nicely. Oh, those bands very good. Get into there. It's a bit you gotta be most careful to get the bubbles is a little bit here. Poke anything that appears. Bit more varnish. Do for that one. <clears throat> that way we do it. If it's runny enough, it'll level out itself. Let's get it more in the middle of the screen so you can see better focus. There we go. It's in one pass, right over to the top of the board and just over the edge, like that. Crest, if you want to call it that. And you get bubbles around these bits. Oh, careful about that. Right, there we go. Right, over the top. Okay. Yeah, could I know oh, about this? Do the bit round the windows, the front cab window. As it's not a flat area, you can flood. What can we do? This is where they say the thin edge of the brush, the point. It's quite good. Yeah, what can you see? Carefully go around it. Very accurate brush there. Slight waver onto the, um, the front cab blue, the side here, doesn't matter, but I don't want it on the roof. 
and then I'll later probably get weathered a bit smoky stuff to make it look right See the light on there, see I've got it. Yeah, alright. Right, there's a little bit on the cab roof there, I can see. I don't want it there. This puts a high. You see, you can see a slight shine just there. Just go on the edge of the brush and take that off. Like that. Just like that, that'll do. See it in the light, and I'll get a bit more. Oh, there's actually a bit of fluff there. Mm. I'll get my tweezers out on there. I can see it. Oh, you can't see it. What's it gone now? I'm just there. Hey, little bugger. Got it. Get out of the way. Alright, I want to go down there, corner, I'll be on the black then, never mind, I'll get that off in a minute. see the light on it don't you there you go I'll level out right using a little brush again get the varnish out of the way a bit just there I've touched it bit across the top of the roof here stroke it away from the roof so you pick it off rather than spread it back across the roof do another go just to make sure there's some on here, but that's not so important because it's going to get varnished anyway. There. So, that's what it looks like now. Obviously, it's wet and will dry more even. So, stop there again. And I'll put it back in its Tupperware box overnight to continue tomorrow. So, the first coat is now dry for the whole of the boiler and firebox area. It seems okay. It's reasonably even. There's no obvious brush marks. I'll rotate it around. Again. Okay. So it gives that sprayed look, I think. So I put the second coat on just to, again, but doing section every other se section I probably won't as I film all of it because you'll get bored you should not see this just get the, the idea of how what's going on and then show you the final results hopefully but this is going to start here again as we did before Follow the pinstripe round the best you can. This brush is nice and accurate. So, and some upstripe, upstrokes, not stripes. Like that. Underneath the 
Unreal. To the corner at the top. See any? There we go over this side. Bubble is there, what I'm trying to get rid of. Just see him go away. That's going to be all right. Glasses keep slipping off my nose. That puts bubbles there. See. Loads of bubbles there now. At least if you can see them doing that thing, see them. Go get rid of them. They don't always pop of their own accord. Of course, you've got to differentiate which is a bubble and which is a rivet. They do look very similar around this bit. Done that, yep. Yeah. Now move it along and do this bit. Well, that funny 
whatever this black thing is here. There's air bubbles again down there. Oh, I'll get just there. Come on, go away. Cross the pipes and the Double this there, get rid of that. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, that's pretty bubbles up here now. Go away. I don't want you. That's got it. Bubble under the head, I want that. Like that. All right, no bubbles. Let's do this here. Hmm, move it over a bit, that's it. There, okay, over the top. Mm. That's a light. Down the sides. I'll get an air bubble there. Go away. Good bit with this lovely sharp brushes, so I'll just have to dig it into the corner down there. 
And it just sits in without going onto the black. That makes it very easy. Yeah, that was just there. Uh, have we done that? Is it all done? Looking right. Oh, I could do a bit of a stroke just down there. I think. Mm -hmm. Right, we'll do that. Right, well, that's done. Well, done as far as that bit's concerned. So, again, back in the, back in its box. To dry off. Right, now to finish off the final segments, one, two, three, and that little bit there. Uh, another double coat seems okay to me. Second coat, shall I say? Double coat. Oh. So, get on with this. That didn't look too good. Get off of the rack. I think this is all right. I get my glasses straight. Let me see. Fluff there. Lucky I spotted it in time. Bubble, go, on, go away. Back over, well, I can just start this and come this way, I suppose. Quite a big bubble, isn't it? It's better just do it this way. I don't know. Well, you do the best bubble, do it that way.
top. I'll do that. My hand gets in the way. It focuses on my hand. Is that a, a loco? What's that down there? Well, that is a little bit of white down there. Let's get off. Yep. That was a bit of varnish on there I need to get rid of. On the black, can I see? What's that? Yeah. Loads of bad bubbles doing that. There's some rivets around there as well. Oh man, look at that lot. Load of bubbles. Get, get out of there. Oh, I'll turn like a rivet or a bubble. Oh, that is. Bit of fluff or something. The more coach you do, the more risk there is of, of, of bits of fluff landing. And we'll do it this way, like that. Few micro bubbles there. Get rid of them. That's better. Okay, now the, these corner bits. Oh, 
with it. And then you know, the other small brush to get off areas. I know I've overlapped, my hand was shaking slightly. Wash it off again on the towel. Again, pulling the varnish away from the back roof like this. So turn the brush over to keep it like that. Yeah, like that. And then do this side. A really impressive bit will be when I do the flats, the flat areas. So I hope that'll be the impressive bit. Roof to see it. And any of that may have got onto the side of the blue cap. Again, it's looking like well, obviously half is dry and half is wet, but not too bad. Yeah, right, put it down in its position like that, and again, we do some flat row. Well, I think the um, the boiler and the firebox area now is complete with two coats. Looks pretty good. You can see it. Oh, there's a minor run. Ooh. Just there, but it's so tiny you won't probably notice it when looking from above. Only in the light like this. Very tiny. Probably see it just there. Anyway, it's it looks alright. There you go. Same brush marks are, well, I'll say more like non existent. So, I'm going to do the flat area now. It's the side of the cab and the valance. I'll put it at an angle for doing this, which looks okay. I'm not going to do that little, the rounded bit here because that's where my finger goes. So, I've been handling that a lot, holding it. I'll do the rest and I'll do that as a separate exercise off camera later on. So let's have a go at this then. Starting with the cab, I think I'll just move it so I can get at it. So I think what I'm supposed to be doing is a bit like I did the carriages, a little bit more varnish. See, quite a lot. Get that air bubble out. Get out. Good. 
Careful going around the bottom out. Quite a lot on Still get bubbles underneath the thing. Hmm. I'll do it this way. Go off the edge like that. I think won't notice. Let's turn it around. Make sure. Get any varnish it gets around here. Get rid of it. Like just there. Dip your brush in a varnish when you want to put it in the thinners. Like that. There's still a bubble or something just there. Go away. I hope it's alright. Support my hand like this, put the hand under support under here. Stops your hand wobbling too much. I have to do the door as well, about it, don't I? Like that. Get the varnish on there and we can Light flat, there's a little ridge of metal, or what would be real metal. Of course it was the whole thing's metal, and it's a load of money. Get that top bit across like that. Does that work doing this? I've introduced bubbles, I don't know. Brush down. So I want to brush strokes in it. 
same direction to the bubble there. Very annoying than they are. That's a rivet. It's hard to tell. Oh, it's shiny. Go up to there. Go down that. And you can't see there, can you? Oh, just spotted some varnish on the roof there. For the cab, you know, mate. There you go. Yeah, finish at that panel line there. With a natural crease there, a good place to stop. Don't need the air bubble, go away. See your line there. Get it off. There you go, that'll do it. Let me see how that dries. Whether it needs another coat or not. Anyway, I'll leave it nice and flat again. See what that looks like. I'm not going to twist and tip tilt that. Not as easy a, a, as a coach side because it's got all these rivets all down the panels which drag and cause the odd bubble. I think I've removed them all. So, wait till it's dry and then have a look. If it needs another coat, well, it needs another coat. Okay. I've since painted the valance on the other side, which I didn't film because it's just a repeat. It seems okay. So now, what I've already done in advance is that little front area. Uh, Around the buffers here in this little the round bit. Uh, I still don't want to touch this, this model with my hands. And I've given it a quick coating of um not coating. I washed it with some uh, white spirit locally around here and let it dry. So now I want to handle the model. You can't hold this very well to paint the ends without holding the bodywork. So what I'm gonna do is use a new piece of kitchen towel put it over and grab it underneath more by the wheels I've got, I haven't got this light on there we go I thought it was a bit dull on that corner so I don't know how well you can see that oh that's a light banging the camera so I've already washed, I've washed this area locally around there with a bit of terps. I keep calling it terps, it's quicker to say than white spirit, and that's what I meant. It was called it terps for decades before I called it white spirit. So with a much smaller flat brush, again it's a Reeves, this says number two. Uh, basically it's something that fits the buffer buffer stems around here. It goes around there with one go. There's no particular technique to this, I'm just paint, just varnishing it. Trying not to get it on the black too much, if at all. A bit tricky around these corners. Around the lamp line, shall I say. 
You know, the flat brush, it can go sideways, which makes it much thinner. I suppose I've got to do under here, so I've got to rotate it around. And I'll see, do that underneath here. Up to the black. Move that around there. And well, the easy way to get this side of the buffer is to do it this way around. Yeah, I've avoided the black. Good. And do this other side. The good thing again about these panels is you can just paint one panel at a time. You've got a nice straight edge to do it to. So there's a lot of bubbles there, what is that? Oh. Have you gone down the back of the buffer? Oh, it's so close to the lens, you want to put it on end, you can't see anything, nor can I. <laughs> Very well. Okay. You see that, give that light to it. There you go, now you can see the shine on it. Hmm. Okay, I am doing both sides at once. Let's hope that's all right. Let's straighten it down again. I'll have to leave it there, I think. I think we're done. Yep, yeah. I can put it down again now. Okay, we'll leave it there. All right. I've now completed all the gloss. I decided that as when I did that front bit, that was much more glossy than these uh, side valances. So I decided to put a second coat on there and on the side of the cab there, that little bit and leave the boiler area alone, cladding alone. Cause I think that's just pushing my luck to put a second coat on. That's pretty good as it is. And I think just to get that final super high gloss, which you probably don't even want anyway, cause I might weather it. so. You're wasting my time and there's a chance of a run so and the weather's hot so it's drying too quickly so that's what i've done i didn't film it because um it's only bore you to death and it looks basically the same thing you saw before so now i'm gonna spin it round on this uh cake turntable icing turntable not a spraying one this is a proper icing one so there will be my finger of god because it's not electri electrified and i'll spin it round slowly so you can see the effect of the glossing. And the various lamps should pick it up. And you can see for yourself if you see any brush marks or not. Yeah. Right, a bit of focus on the 10,000 number. I do slow enough. Very hard to, to, uh, to light this right. I've got three lamps on this, and it still looks darkish. Uh, really slowly, and you'll see the gloss work as it comes around. And you look at the front of the valance, that's starting to light up now. The curved bit, and you'll see the light going around, and you can see whether there's any brush marks worth notice for there. And I think I've got it, so you can actually see inside the cab again. That's not easy to do. 
if we can get that or not. I can't have a light exactly in line with the camera because I can't see what I'm doing if I do. That doesn't help. I'm going to just hold it there and see if it will. I don't know. Can't get any light in there or not. I've got this lamp. Oh, there you'll see that. Yeah, and there you can see it. It's not helping, is it? Well, not a lot I can do about that, I'm afraid. So I continue, continue round. Will this lamp light it up? It's a very deep cab on the hush hush. Apparently, the fireman didn't like it because he had to walk from the cab tender to the uh, where the fire is. So, hopefully, the uh, this white turntable the the lamp lights up the um bounces off the white and lights up the wheels better anyway that's a loco i'll well, see if we can do the same for the tender so I'll pause it all right the tender's on there now if you can we've already seen that but that when the light goes past it is the best because it's a dead flat surface it's very easy to do and gives very good results there's a very good window porthole Brush marks, but they, but they don't notice when you look at it. They're very fine. That's a bright light on it. It's probably no different to what the real thing had. They were brush painted. They weren't sprayed. I'm aware of. Not in the 1930s, or even now. On restorations. Can I light that up? Let's see some of the lightly weathered there with some um the handles done in red and silver and a bit of coal on the on the shoot thing 